Hello and welcome to this session of Heart, Soul, Mind at St. Paul Lutheran Church in this fall of 2020 as we are considering the issues raised by Glenn Powell in his book, Saving the Bible from Ourselves. We continue in this session with looking at some of the other big stories that have been identified by contemporary biblical interpreters and theologians in the church. Um, and in this session in particular, we come to the individual who is known as the father or the founder of American black liberation theology, Professor James H. Cohn. Uh, Cohn was a professor at Union Theological Seminary in the 1970s and 80s and 90s. Um, is a distinguished career, uh, widely respected and uh, recognized for his articulation of the uh, themes of liberation theology in the context of the American black church experience. His own church background and ordination were with the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, in his book, God of the Oppressed from 1975, Cohn really sets out his understanding of the big story of the Bible in a chapter on biblical revelation and social existence. Uh, you'll see in that chapter, which is the reading for this week, that he takes up uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament and then moves on to talk about the biblical story and the task of theology. We'll get to that last part in a moment because it adds a helpful new dimension to our discussion, I think. Um, but initially, uh, I just want to encourage you as you read this um, to think about the ways in which we have now learned to ask questions about the big stories that people are offering us in their writings. Um, often it's helpful to look for language like the goal or the purpose or the objective of the Bible or of revelation is thus and such because that gives an excellent indication of what the point of the big story might be. Cohn's pretty clear about the fact that he says uh, right at the outset uh, of what we're reading that uh, the Old Testament is a history book. And in fact, he goes about narrating his big story by talking about what the history of Israel is. Um, to a certain extent, he follows the canonical order of the biblical books. Uh, but in terms of the Christian Bible, uh, he doesn't seem to make very much of the wisdom books, for example, uh, moving from the Torah uh, through the historical books of Joshua through Second Kings, or even Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, perhaps. It's not entirely clear. He does get into that post-exilic period, but not with a lot of biblical references. Um, but then, and he, he does uh, touch on the Psalms a bit, but of books like uh, Job and Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs, um, um, Daniel, um, we really don't hear very much. But then when we pick up with uh, the major prophets of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the minor prophets, especially the 8th century minor prophets, Amos, Micah, Hosea, and Isaiah of Jerusalem. Um, here, uh, Cohn is very much working with material that is conducive to his big story. Um, so we might ask how this big story works when what he is presenting us is essentially an historical account that's been derived from the biblical texts um, rather than exactly following the structure of the Old Testament itself. 
In some ways, Cunningham, in our Roman Catholic texts, had a, has a similar issue that he needs to address uh, because he ultimately ends up telling an historical story um, that doesn't necessarily follow uh, the canonical order of the Old Testament. And then there's something very interesting um, that we come to on page 72, uh, and that is where Cohn makes the transition from considering the Old Testament to considering the New Testament. Uh, take a careful look at that. How does he make that transition? How does he bring the story of God's bringing the people of Israel to their liberated freedom? Um, how does he bring that to a close and then turn toward the New Testament? Um, again, I think it's telling about uh, what he understands the big story to be. One of the things we see in the way Cohn frames his writing is that he identifies the theme and then he takes us to the places where he sees it present. Uh, it's echoed here, it's expressed there, it's picked up in another place. Uh, but does he really account for all the material in between that he's not dealing with, uh, that he's not focusing on in particular? And does that do anything to our confidence in the story that he says that this is telling? It may or it may not. I'm, I'm not trying to uh, uh, bend your ideas or your opinion or your um, assessment of Cone in one direction or another. I'm, I'm describing how his work relates to the biblical texts um, as we've done also with the Roman Catholic texts, with Powell's reading of Hebrews, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and just asking, um, what would we ask of a big story in terms of not only identifying a theme and the places where it's present, but also perhaps dealing with the texts that are not in focus? Cohn, in some ways, asks that question himself, and this is the very interesting piece that he introduces to our whole discussion in a way that other writers so far have not. Um, if we go to page 82, he starts to talk about hermeneutics. It's one of those great theological terms that first year, first semester seminarians learn and learn to wrestle with and then ultimately domesticate and learn how to toss out uh, into conversations when they <clears throat> want to um, either impress the people who are helping to put them through seminary um, or confuse the people perhaps um, whom they want to convince about something. Um, and it's a Greek term just brought into English. Um, it means in Greek to interpret. Uh, and hermeneutics, uh, while it has a range of meanings in English, can generally be taken to mean the method or the principle by which we interpret a passage. It is in many ways the answer to the question, why are you reading that way? Not what do you read, not what does it mean, but why do you think it means that? And when we can answer that question, then we have articulated, we've expressed what our hermeneutics are. They're the principles and the method by which we read a passage and come to say what that passage means. Uh, Cohen is very clear about what he believes a legitimate hermeneutic of reading scripture is. And frankly, I think he is pretty certain about what he believes that is. Um, he's very clear and he puts it forward as the way that one should read scripture. We've seen other hermeneutics, though. His is about the liberation of the poor. Others that we've seen have been about 
relationships of shalom or about uh, God's passionate love for her people uh, or about Jesus Christ and the salvation of humanity that God works in Jesus Christ. These are all other hermeneutics, principles by which one would read the Bible because these are the shape of the big story that's being told. And Cohn would say that if those big stories, those hermeneutics, don't put front and center the liberation of the poor, then they are disqualified just by that fact. Um, they are, he says, heretical. But we can ask whether that's the case. I think we can ask why is it that our Roman Catholic writers and Pau and Cohn come out with these different hermeneutics or different principles for understanding the Bible's big story writ large. As we come to understand what it is that would lead any of them to shape their big story the way they do, we get closer perhaps to understanding how it is that we might take the Bible as a whole and begin to think about what its big story is for us. It's fun to take that turn with you this week. I look forward to doing it. I hope that Cone helps us to see how a big story can be drawn together uh, out of the scripture in a way similar to these other writers that we've seen. And I certainly look forward to our discussion. God bless.